Tom, we can always go to prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we, Father, thank you for this morning for the blessing of being in your house. And Father, that you love us and care for us. God, thank you that you care for me. Father, I pray this morning that God, I'd have that same care for others. Yes, Lord. God, I pray this morning if there's someone here without Jesus, I pray that God today will be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray this morning that you bless the service and will lift you up in praise and honor. God, we thank you for all we have. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask me why I stand to sing. What glad tidings these lips bring. I proclaim to you one thing. There is a kingdom come. Yeah. Yes, amen. Let this joyous anthem roll. Stirring peace within each soul, his plans in place, God's in control. Amen. There is a kingdom coming. Every wrong will be made right. Yeah. All that's faith will be made sight. plots his dark designs but soon all faithless hearts will find there is a kingdom coming Thank you. every wrong will be made right all that's faith will be made sight and a shadows only light there is a kingdom coming so come Lord Jesus let all who hear sing come Lord Jesus may the day be near when every wrong will be made right all that's faith will be made sight. In the shadows only light, there is a kingdom coming. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning. Let's go to Second Kings. Second Kings, uh, chapter four. Amen. Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four, verse eight it says it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem says, where was a great woman? And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, so as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a, a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he, he, he turned into the chamber, and he lay there. And he said to Geza, his servant, Call this Shumite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now, uh, 
unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Verse 14 says, And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gage answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About that season, according uh, to my, the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thee, my handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son in the season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. As we look at this, this story, it's a wonderful story, we, we find here Elisha he is a type of our Lord. He had the power of God. You can re just read just a few chapters earlier. Uh, Elijah, he was a servant of uh, Elijah, and Elijah went up to God in a whirlwind. The boy, what a miraculous thing that took place. And he asked Elijah, can I do anything for you? He said, yes, give me a double portion of what you have. Amen. And I, he did that. Amen. So he had the power. He had the presence of God upon him. He was the, the prophet. He was the mediator between a, a man and God. And we find he is a type of our Christ. Amen. And we find it was a, a day he would travel. He would travel through this place called Shunem. And you know, I've thought about that. I've shared this before. I'm glad I have a Savior uh, that just didn't sit up in the glories of heaven. Yeah. He's one that's willing to pass by. Amen. And you know what? I'm confident this morning, many people even in the community here don't know where Deputy is. But I'm glad to tell you what. I'm glad to tell you what the Lord knows where it is, and he will pass by. Amen. You'll find Peter and uh, John, they were fishing, and he passed by, and he said, follow me. you find the Bible said he was passing by, and he saw Levi sitting there and doing his job, and he said, would you follow me? You'll find he passed by, and those that were, uh, uh, were blind uh, uh, saw him, or didn't see, but he, he came by. he find he, he passed by. He knew very well Zacchaeus was going to be up that tree. He passed by. I'm glad he passed by in my life. And that's what he does, amen. So we find there was a day he was passing by. And praise the Lord. I tell you what, you know when he passes by, he wants us to do something. He wants us to call upon him. You find the Bible says that Jesus was walking on the water. Says he was going to pass by. But praise God, they were about ready to sink. And I tell you what, you know what they did? They called unto Jesus. I may tell you what, this morning if Jesus is passing by, would you call upon him? That's what he wants. And we find, we find the Bible tells us uh, that as he passed by, the, my, verse 8, in my Bible, it says there was a great woman. A great woman. Now, I don't like to try to read too much into things. Now, I noticed uh, as I was studying this, some other translations in the Bible like to put something else in there, and they said that she was a woman of great wealth. Well, they didn't tell me that. Just said she was a great woman. Fact is, if you look up at that word great, uh, you'll find it the same place. It says uh, there was a great whale. Okay? That whale wasn't rich. It was big, okay? You'll find it's used oftentimes in big. But you know what uh, we find here? It doesn't matter what man thinks about this woman. You know what God told us? She was a great woman. And it doesn't matter what man thinks about you. It What matters is what God thinks about you. I'm kind, I, in my way, as I looked at this story, I thought maybe no one knew anything about this woman. She was just like anybody else. But God said she was a great woman. She was a great woman. Well, we're going to look at this morning what made her so great. What made this woman great? By the way, having lots of money don't make anybody great. That's right. and, uh, uh, but we find here that God said she was great. So we find here, first of all, I, I believe she was great, first of all, because she had a sensitivity of God or for God. The Bible said, no man will come unto me except I draw him. The Father draws him. 
I'm glad he draws, aren't you? But you know, I'm confident he draws, but you know, I'm glad there was a time in my life I was sensitive and I felt that drawing. I felt that tugging on my heart. I'm glad he used, maybe he used a Sunday school teacher. Maybe he used a mama. Maybe he used a preacher. Maybe he used somebody. But you heard the word of God. You heard the truth. And there was something. And I was sensitive to it. And it started knocking on my heart's door. Do you remember having that sensitivity? By the way, I hope you still have that sensitivity. By the way, he still wants to talk with us. He's passing by. He's got something for you this morning, amen. And this woman was sensitive. And that's kind of interesting. We find it was a day that Elijah was passing through this city. And we find there must have been something in this woman that said to her, you need to go to that man over there. And so she went up to Elijah and she says, are you hungry? And she says, I got some food back home. I said, we'll take care of you. I tell you, I thought about that. Can you imagine? You know, sometimes we, we have to be careful. And, uh, and I don't think it was probably any different than that day. And we live in a day-to-day. I can imagine if my wife went up to some stranger out in the street and said, hey, you need something. Uh, we got some food at my house. You know, I'd probably be like the husband here. I'd probably say, what are you doing? He, he might be a nutcase. Who are you bringing in my house here? But you know what? She had something more uh, than a gut feeling. She had a tugging of God. And I'm confident she was sensitive to God. And she said, there's someone over there that you need to go to. I'm glad there's a drawing power of God. She was sensitive to that. And I, this morning, I want you to be sensitive. I want you to get out your spiritual ears. And I want you to get out that spiritual uh, sense this morning. Uh, there's a God uh, that loves you. He's sitting down right next to you. And he'll whisper in your ear. He's got something for you. And this woman, praise God, she was sensitive uh, to the leading of the Spirit of God. We need that today. Oh, how we do. Now, I didn't, we can get led by the flesh. It'll lead us wrong. But praise God, she was sensitive uh, for that. Not even so much. I like what she did. The Bible said she constrained him. She said, I got some food back home. You need to come over to my house. And she said, oh, I don't want to put you out. I'm not going to do it. She said, no, I want you to. Come on. You know, that's kind of like a mother. You have mothers try to feed you. Say, come on, eat some more. Come on. Come on, do that. Fact is, when you're a kid, they made you do it. Did you ever get made to eat? I don't know why it's so hard. I tell you, it's hard to imagine that my mom would ever have done it for me. I have no trouble eating now. (laughs) Amen, just give me more. That's how I am, but it seems like sometimes we don't. But praise God, she didn't didn't take that. And you know what? She brought him into his house. And she, she noticed... There was something about this man that he wasn't like any others. The Bible says he told her husband, said, I perceive that he's a holy man. There's something special about this man here. He's not just any. She was sensitive. And she knew and really, you know what? Can you imagine, you know what? You know what she was experiencing? The presence of God. I tell you, it's good to li- if you listen to God and you'll get the presence of God. I tell you what, he'll either get you right or you'll squirm, amen, hallelujah. And we find out, she told her husband, she said there's something special about this man. I think about Stephen as he was being stoned and he was sharing the truth and he told some of those, he said, do you always resist the Holy Spirit? This woman didn't resist, she listened. She was sensitive, amen. She was sensitive to her calling, amen. She's sensitive to the Spirit. I tell you, we can be in churches here this morning. You can be cold. You can be cold-hearted. You say, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to hear. I want you this morning, uh, be a great woman. Be a great man. Be sensitive to the Spirit and the calling of God. When's the last time you heard from God, amen? I tell you, I apologize to my Savior this morning. I was driving the church van going to get Stanley and boy, I get all worked up. I got all my things done. I know what I'm going to preach. I'm going to do that. And you know what I've said? Oh Lord, I'm sorry I haven't asked you. I haven't even talked to you. 
I tell you, shame on me. I tell you what, praise God. We need to be sensitive uh, to his calling. Uh, to his, he says, I want to talk to you. I've got something for you this morning, amen. But we find she was great in the sensitivity of God. But here's what I really like about this woman. You know what she also did? She was sensitive and she could have just stopped there. There's many of you that are sensitive. You may be here and you say, well, I felt that tugging. I felt God. I felt him speaking to me. He's saying, I've got something for you to do, or I'd sure like to save you. And there's many in today that are in churches today, and they're sensitive. Oh, I felt that. Don't lose that. I want you to keep on feeling that this morning. But you know what she did? She went up for another step further, and she made room for God. It's one thing to have God knocking. It's another to say, I'm going to make some room for God in my life. Yes. She made this some room. The Bible, the Bible tells us there that she had a desire for more. You know, when he stopped by, the Bible said he, every time he stopped by, he stopped in and got some bread, got something to eat. And boy, she had that fellowship, and it was something that tugged her and said, this is pretty good stuff. It was a touch she didn't get anywhere else. But praise God, she said, you know what? I sure would like to have more of that. You know what the Bible says? Taste and see the Lord is good. Amen. And she said, I'd like to have some more of that. And so she talked to her husband and she said, I'd like to make a chamber. Now I tell you, can you imagine, I, and I know a little bit about uh, our, my home, and when it comes to remodeling my house, I kind of stay out of it. I know how to remodel my garage, okay? That's my domain. I got my shed and I got my garage. I'm going to put my stuff up there. But now when it comes to the house, men, some good advice. Leave it up to her. Now can you imagine she came to her husband and she said, boy, I tell you what, I perceive this is a man of God. I'd like to make some room for him. Well, by the way, first of all, she did say, let us. You notice that? Hallelujah. She got him involved. And I, I know many times I'll get involved. Something my wife said, let us do this. Amen? Let us make a chamber. Now, this was not just some spot in the garage. It was not some extra space in the basement. I studied that word chamber. And you'll find a chamber was a place the kings had. You'll find many places the kings went into an upper room. They had a place there and they were met up in a chamber, amen. Kings had a place. It was a special place. you find even the Bible said the Pharisees, this religious group, they like to, be, they like to hang around the chamber. In the upper room, that's where they like to hang. They like to be seen up there. It was a place of honor. In Psalms 104, verse 13, the Bible referring to our, our God says, so He waters the hills from His chamber. You'll find in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, they were waiting in the upper room. You know what they got waited for? The power and the presence of God. This, this was not just a little place in the corner. They said, I would like to make room for Him. We're going to have to have a building project. We're going to have to have an addition. Let's make it up to the upper room up here. We'll put a bed in there. We'll put a stool in there. We'll put a lampstand in there. We'll make it comfortable for him. Boy, I can't hardly imagine. Say, how often are you coming by? Can you imagine the husband? Well, not just some place in the corner. We, we need to get some materials. We're going to make an investment in this. You know, that made this woman great. You know what she was making room for? God. Have you made room for God in your life? I tell you, we're so doggone busy in this life here. We, I, I tell you what, we don't make room for God. We say we got room for him, but we got him down in a dungeon somewhere. We got him in a closet somewhere. Every once in a while, we say, oh, I think I need God. Let's go over the closet. Hey, God, I need you today. No, she's making a permanent dwelling, an upper room, a place of, a, of, of, of prestige, of honor, a place of lordship. 
I'm giving him the best place in the house. God said this was a great woman. This was a major change. I don't know if you've ever done a remodel, but it messes up the whole house. It does. We had addition on our house, and I'm telling you what, the whole house was a disaster. And you know what, I'm here to tell you what, I want to warn you. When you make room for God in your life, it's going to shake up every room in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what, when God comes in there, he's going to change some things, amen. When you put him in where he deserves to be, just get him out of the closet. Get him out of the basement. Get him out of the little place in the corner. Put him where he deserves to be. And you know what? It'll, it'll change the whole house. Boy, I tell you what, we had remodeled there. My wife, she deserved a new kitchen. And you know what? In order to get a new kitchen, I tell you what, well, why can't you just remodel? It didn't, wouldn't work out that. We had to tear down a wall. In order to tear down that wall, we then had to remove our, move our dining room to another room. In order to put the dining room in the other room, we needed, that's where our living room was. We need to add on to the house, amen. Uh, I tell you, it's all for a kitchen. It's also because I like to eat, amen. But I tell you, when God comes in your life, it changes things. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And this woman said, I want to make a room for him. He deserves a better place. And by the way, this place of Shuim here, the Bible tells us it was a place of, of double rest. That's what it means. I believe it was like a The husband probably said, now honey, there's better places in town. Uh, there's a Holiday Inn over there and they got a breakfast in the morning. I mean, it's good. You go over there, they got the Comfort Inn. They got the Hyatt over there. I mean, this place was known as double rest. You want to get a good rest? Go to there. And you know what? He doesn't really want to stay here. And you know what she says? Oh, no. He wants to stay here. Isn't, that, isn't it amazing? God that could dwell. You know where he wants to dwell? In the upper room in you. Hey, you. Hallelujah. This woman made a room. Praise God. You know, I believe that's a day of salvation. I tell you, you don't get saved by saying some little prayer. You don't get saved by just get dunked in the water. You don't get saved, amen, by just rehearsing some Bible verse. You don't get saved by just going to church on Sunday morning. You get it because there was an opening. There was a God that was knocking on your heart's door. And you said, yes, come on in. Amen. Some folks say, come on in. And when I got time for you, I'll get you out of the basement. No, we made enough of room for them, didn't we? I tell you how wonderful that is. I tell you, this woman here, praise the Lord. She was a great woman. She made a spot for the man of God. She made a place for God in her life. And you know what's so interesting? When my, when my, my mother-in-law, they're having some problems here just a few, you know, not too long ago, we made a spot for her in our house. No problem. We even bought a TV. She never did use that TV one time. We, 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 we tried to make it nice, okay, and right across from our main bathroom, right there. We had no problem doing that. When my, my youngest daughter, Molly, moved out, I thought, boy, I had my eye on her room. I thought, that'd make a nice corner office. Three windows in there. I got it kind of visual. Well, you know what happened? Grandkids. Well... I thought, well, we'll make it a playroom. So now it's been a playroom. And now we're, man, we're now, right now, Sister Laura's doing some remodeling. Hallelujah, praise God. And uh, she's painting it, getting rid of the John Deere green, and uh, making it something normal. And uh, uh, we're making room for another bed. It's not just a playroom. Now we have grandkids that come over. And... Uh, what, we got to have a bed for one. We got to have a bed for another. I tell you what, now we ain't moving. We ain't, we're not going to build on. 
But you know, we'll do a lot of stuff. We'll do a lot of things for blood relatives, won't we? But you know, the husband thought, this is a stranger. <coughs> a stranger! It might have been a stranger to him or someone else, but it was not a stranger to this woman here. She said, I like his company. Anybody like the Lord's company? There ain't nothing better than get in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, well, how do I do that? You just call unto him, and he'll call unto you. He'll get you all excited. He'll stir up that spirit that's in you. And amen, there ain't nothing better than that. That's what this woman did here. Amen. How wonderful uh, what took place in her life. And boy, I'd like to encourage you this morning to make room for God. Well, there's something else that made her great. One more thing made her great. By the way, the results for making room for God in your life is wonderful. You say, oh boy, he's going to be a hardship. I'm going to have to do this now. Now God's in my life. I've got to go do all these, you know, these Christian things. And I tell you what, we've got a bad perspective of this. But you know what happened there? The results, we were sitting there, and you'll find there that uh, uh, Elijah said, what can we do for this woman? What, is, what can we do for her? Now, by the way, this, this woman here, <clears throat> we find here uh, that the, the man of God said, now you go ask her what she needs. And, 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 and they, they said, do you need me to talk to the king for you? I tell you, the Lord can talk to the king for you. And you know what? She said, nah, I'm fine. I don't need anything. And then she said, well, you want me to talk to the captain of the host, the Bible says. And she said, no, I'm fine. I don't know, that's protection or whatever it might be. That's the host of the army. So you want me to do that for you? No, I'm fine. You know what she says? I'm fine, just like I am. I'm going to tell you what, if you've got Jesus, you got everything. Yes, you don't need anything else. And praise God, she didn't need anything. But it, but it came back and Elijah said, what can we do for her then? And you know what? God already knows what you desire. She didn't need this, but she desired a child. And she said, you know what? Bring her in here. You'll find that I just love this story. He, she came up to the other room. She stood in the doorway. I mean, I tell you what, this is in the presence of God, amen. It says, guess what? This time next year, you're going to have a child. I tell you what, God is a God that just doesn't take care of our needs. I'm mean, going to tell you what, he doesn't have to do anything else, but he's given me the desires of my heart. Now, sometimes I have some of the desire of my heart he didn't give me, but he knows what I need. He knows what is a good desire and a bad desire. And he took care of this precious woman. But as we read the story, and I'm not going to read it all for you, but you'll find here what a, something happened then. You'll find that when God blessed you, blessed this woman, and it, one reason that they blessed her, it said, it used the word said that she'd been careful. Towards them. I looked up the word careful, it meant that she was moved with fear. You know, she was afraid she wasn't taking care of the needs. She was afraid she wasn't taking care of Elijah. Is that stool okay? Is your bed okay? Is everything okay? I tell you what, that's how it would be good if we treated our God that way. Is everything all right, Lord? What should I do for you? What do you want? That's how this woman was. What a great woman. Amen. So God blessed her with a son. But then you'll find as you read on there came a day. The son was out in the field. Some years have gone on. It isn't really told us how old he was. But he was old enough that the husband, who's an old man, couldn't carry him. Had to have somebody else carry him back to the mama. But he was out there in the field. And he says, oh, my head, my head, you'll find as you read on. And you know what happened? He, he took the, the, carried the, the, the child, the, the, I don't know, might have been a teenager as far as I know, and brought that one to this, this woman here, the one that where God had blessed her in such a mighty way. For, for Why did he bless her? Because she made room for God. And she looked at what God had given her in, in her arms. This child died. I don't think you could think of anything worse to take place. You know what the Bible says? She took that child. She, she took that child and she climbed up to the upper room. And she set him in the room in a sense of God. She set him in that bed. Lifeless. 
And she, the Bible says she walked out of the room and shut the door. But you know what? If you read this story, it's a wonderful story what she did. She came down to her husband. I mean, it looked like there's no hope. There's death. She came down to her husband. She says, get me the donkeys. Saddle them up. I'm getting on them. I'm going to go. I'm going to see Elisha. The husband goes, what are you doing? It's not, a, it's not a one of those religious days. It's not Easter. <laughs> it's not Christmas. Where are you going? She said, it'll be all right. He'll be okay. He's, he'll, he'll see me. I'm glad God will see you any day. Yeah. And she, she told the servant, and it's interesting, and I, I can't just, I'd like to point all these things out, but she said she told the servant that, that went with her, says, you just keep it in full gear. I mean, you just keep going until I say so. They got on those donkeys. I got looking there. They're going to Mount Carmel. They're headed to Mount Carmel where Elisha is. And I was looking there and I was... I, I, I praise God for Google. I like Google, don't you? I Googled. You, you know what? I can Google from here to wherever. But you know what? You can even go over there to the promised land and Google cities over there. And you know what? It's a, according to Google, it's 53 minutes to get there. 53 minutes to get there. But that's today. She got on a donkey. She got heading on. She's headed to the man of God. You know why she's headed to the man of God? You know why this woman was so great? Because she believed in a God that could do the impossible. She gets to the man of God, and I like this story. I don't know how far she's away, but the Bible says she's far off. Elisha sees her. Oh, I like that. I, I don't think they had binoculars. It's the same thing. The prodigal son had drifted away from the father. The father's waiting and watching for, for, for days and years and months. The Bible said he saw him coming afar off. Yeah. Woo, amen. He sees it coming. Yeah. He knows when you're coming. He knows when you got a need. And he comes and he drops himself at the feet of Elijah and said, I, Would you help me? There's a lot more involved that took place, but Elijah, in a sense, you know what he does? He takes off. He ends up getting there. He shuts the door. He paces back and forth, and the Bible says he prays. He prays to the Father. He falls, he lays down on that, that child. And it's quite an interesting story. That dead came to life. Yes. And when it came to life, he sneezed seven times. I don't know, I preached on that sneezing not too long ago. He got rid of that impurity. There was something in there that wasn't good. You know, he sneezed out death. I don't know. But the point of the matter is this woman did not give up. She believed there was a God that was able to to do the impossible. And you know this morning, I don't know what you're going through, but I know there's things in our life that we just give up on. We say, I don't think there's any hope. Praise God for this woman. The husband, I don't know. I don't, we don't really know all about him. He helped build the chamber. He did all those things. But he didn't make a run for the man, for the man of God. He didn't make a run to God. He said, where are you going? You know what, this morning we need to believe that we have a God that's able. This woman was great. First of all, she was sensitive. She heard God. You know, this morning I hope you hear God. You say, I don't know, you're all kind of nuts old. I mean, yeah, I do, I hear God. Anybody ever heard God? I can't say I heard an audible voice. I can't say if his voice was high, low, or whatever it is, but there's, there's a knocking, there's a speaking that God speaks to me. And I'm glad there was a day in my life when I heard that speaking. You know what he first says? You need me. That religion you've got, it ain't going to cut it. That going to church, I went to church. That ain't going to do it. There needs to be a day in your life. You know what? You need to make room for me. 
and I'm so glad for the day I opened that door. And you know what? I said, take over. Be in charge. Get in the upper room. This woman did that. But you know what she also did? She believed that that God in the upper room could take care of anything. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing worse than death. Couldn't be anything harder. You know what it tells me? Whatever you're going through, God can take care of. What a mighty God we serve. You say, I'm having a hard time with my children. You're going to have a hard time with them. And you know what you need? To believe there's a God that can take care of it. You say, I'm having a hard time with my relationship. Maybe it's a marriage, whatever it is. I tell you what, there's a God that can take death and put life back into it. Amen. Say, I'm just not happy with my job. I'm not happy with this or whatever. There's no, I don't have contentment like this woman had here. I tell you, I have a God that can give you peace. Amen. This morning, I wonder what's, what's great about you. Have you made room for Jesus? Please make room for him. You know what? He's made room for you. Let's all stand this morning. Father, help us, Lord. We thank you for the example of this woman, Lord, a great woman. You told us she was great. Lord, she heard God. She was sensitive to God. She maybe didn't understand why even, but Lord, praise God that she acted upon it. She realized there was something good about this God. To the point she realized there was a need in her family. There was a need in her household. And Lord, we all are families this morning. Help us, Lord. It wouldn't be good if we'd get God back in our schools. We'd get him back in our nation. But more importantly, this morning, we need to get him back in our homes. We get him back in our churches. And Lord, we need to make room for our God. Let's put him in that elevated position in our lives. Lord, help us to realize that that God that's in our life, He's able. You didn't leave us alone. You know the situations here this morning. Help us, Lord, to make that room for Jesus. Maybe we've never made that room. Maybe we've just had religion and formalism. Help us, Lord, as you knock, and we hear that knocking on our heart's door, that we would open up that door and say, Lord, take charge. Have your way. Help us we give that worry to you. Have your way this morning in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Boy, I hope you're sensitive enough this morning you might hear the knocking of God. There's no one that cares for you more greatly than my Savior. He has a desire for your soul. And he's knocking he said, I, would, you, would you open up? Would you let me have my way? It's not an easy thing to make room for God in your life. It's not easy to say, oh, we're going to do some reconstruction. We're going to do some remodeling. It's not easy to do. But there's a God that if you just let him in, he'll do the rest. You're here this morning, you say, boy, there's some areas, there's some things in my life. You say, I've got a loved one and it seems like there's no hope. I don't think they, they care about God. You say, I'd like to see him saved. It seems like I talked to him. It doesn't seem like it makes any difference. I have a God that's able this morning to reach down in the deepest depth, that coldest heart. Oh, Lord, please. Help us to believe you can do that. Have your way. I've got a child. He needs you, Jesus. He needs you. We need help. We're calling upon you because we know that you're able. I wonder how big a room do you have for Jesus? How big a room is it really? Oh, he deserves the upper room. This woman wasn't 
great because of all her money. It wasn't great because she had a position. She was great because she made that room for God in her home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't forget to get some flowers, ladies, before you leave. Get have them back there. Got them here. Amen. Lord is so good. I tell you what, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. What a story, amen. This woman had a story. We don't even know her name. We don't know anything else about her. But God says she was great. Amen. Pray to come back tonight if you can. I know Brother Neff, I'm looking forward to seeing him and hearing him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Gary, will you close this again? in your house this morning, Lord. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you give us, the provisions that you provide to us every day, Lord God. I'll be able to give you praise and thanks for it all. Thank you for all the mothers here today.